Now, what should Indians eat? Anything they want may be a popular answer, but it's not an ideal answer. Your diet has a major impact on your health. A good diet can keep you healthy, a bad one can make you sick. We already know that, but a new report also says this. And it has been published by India's top medical body, the ICMR, or the Indian Council of Medical Research. They found that 56% diseases in India are linked to a bad diet, 56%. Maybe more processed food, or too much sugar, or not enough nutrients. Imagine that, more than half of all diseases due to food, which makes you wonder what exactly qualifies as a good diet. What should, you, what should your plate look like? Here's what ICMR says. You should have 100 grams of fruits, 85 grams of pulses, egg, and meat, 35 grams of nuts and seeds, 27 grams of fats and oil, 250 grams of cereals, 300 milliliters of milk or curd, and 400 grams of vegetables. I know we called it a plate, but this is not for just one meal. It is for the entire day. The ICMR says this diet will give you 2,000 calories. It is also pretty balanced in nutrients. And beyond this, the ICMR has given 17 guidelines, a few of them stand out, like using oils and fats in moderation, avoiding protein supplements, restricting salt intake, and minimizing sugar consumption. That last one may sound hard to do. How much sugar should you be consuming? The ICMR says 20 to 25 grams in a day. Now, to put that in context, a, one teaspoon of sugar is 5.7 grams. And a can of Coca-Cola has almost 32 grams. So one can will put you over the limit. The ICMR has also covered cooking methods and materials. They've settled some long-standing debates. For example, microwave ovens and air fryers. The report gives both of them a thumbs up. As for cooking material, the ICMR says eastern ves earthen vessels are the safest. Your non-stick pans are safe too, but not beyond 170 degrees Celsius. And what about your favorite beverages? The report advises tea and coffee in moderation. It says caffeine should not exceed 300 grams per day. And how much is that? Around three cups. As for alcohol, it's a strict no, not even light drinking. But you know what caught our attention? The 17th guideline issued by ICMR. It says, read information on labels to make informed choices. It may sound like good advice, but is that information accurate? Based on recent developments, maybe not. Indian products are under the scanner in foreign markets, especially Indian spices. You may have heard of MDH and Everest. These are the biggest spice producers in India. But some of their products have been banned in Hong Kong and Singapore. Why? Because they had too much pesticide. And that too, a cancer-causing one. Same in Europe. In the last five years, the EU flagged more than 400 Indian products. Apparently, they were highly contaminated, 400. Remember, we are talking about products that had passed Indian quality checks. Yet, they were flagged. 21 products had cadmium, which increases the risk of kidney disease. 59 products had pesticides, again, cancer-causing ones. And 100 products had salmonella. Now, the EU flagged these products, so presumably, they did not enter the European market. But what about India? We are buying and consuming these products, these contaminated items, which makes you wonder, what is the regulator doing? In India, food regulation is done by the FSSAI, the Food Safety and Standards Authority of India. They function under the Ministry of Health. So the buck stops with them. How did these products pass their quality checks? Well, the problems are many. One is funding. The regulator's budget has actually been cut in 2019, around 360 crore rupees was allocated for them. By 2022, the allocation came down to 300 crores. So money is a problem. You need funds to hire more food commissioners, to carry out more checks, and to be more vigilant. Now, 300 crores is around $35 million. Compare this to the US regulator. In America, the FDA looks after food and drugs. And what is their budget? More than six and a half billion dollars. They spent around 43 million on offices and labs alone. Now, we're not saying replicate that, but clearly 35 million is not enough. Not when the health of 1.4 billion people is at risk. The second problem is corruption. Just this week, Indian officials arrested an FSSAI assistant director. 
He was taking bribes from a private lab. Guess how much money they recovered from him? Around 1.8 crore rupees. These are two things the government can easily address. Increase the funding and step up vigilance. If not, these diet plans and export ambitions are pointless. First Post reports from the world's second largest continent. Hello, I'm Alison Lagrange. A very warm welcome from Durban, South Africa. We get you the news and the newsmakers from Africa. South Africa goes to the polls on the 29th of May. I will track the election and bring you ground reports. Is it the end of the road for the African National Congress? And will former President Jacob Zuma stage a dramatic comeback? From elections to climate change, to innovations and opportunities. As the world's attention shifts, we report from Africa, the heart of the Global South. Join me every weekday live on First Post.